All right, everyone, let's just take 15 seconds to appreciate this album cover. <coughs> I argue that this album cover from several years ago actually has echoes and historical roots from 16th and 17th century Dutch art. <laughs> that there's encoded meaning in the items that are placed there, such as the candle, the velvet, the goblet, the gold watch, and just the gold in general. This genre from the 16th and 17th century uh, Dutch society is called vanitas. It comes from the Latin root for vanishing or vanity. The idea that life is completely fleeting and most importantly so is luxury and so is life itself. I'm going to show you three different examples of this vanitas genre. This is a called the Repentant Magdalene from Georges de la Tour and uh, notice how she is staring at a candle just like Drake was. This is another example. <laughs> this is a uh, a gold goblet and a piece of orange, which was a huge luxury back then, all on a velvet uh, tablecloth. And nextly, we have, again, these similar themes of luxury items like fresh cut flowers, a gold skull, books, and a velvet tablecloth. These are all items that, at that point, would have been a rarity for basically royalty and kings. Especially the candles. Um, back then, having anything that could be illuminated was a huge, huge luxury. I also argue that the, the album cover implies Drake's technical excellence, like those paintings do. Those painters were able to paint non-solid forms, smoke, from a candle flame, water. Um, a second example would be the textural specificity and textural um, uh, contrast, such as the softness of the fabric against the hardness of the glass and the hardness of the metal. And lastly, the technique of chiaroscuro, which is um, the idea, which is this bright, lovely light coming out of an otherwise very dark region in the painting. I would like to mention that it takes real technical skill to create that darkness and not have it be, not have it look really flat and gritty. What Vanitas gives us is darkness without sucking, without the black pigment sucking out all the light from your eyes. This is an example of where black pigment is used. This is an El, an El Greco painting, and you'll see that it has a certain sort of dirty, dirtiness and flatness, and it lacks that round robustness that Bonitas paintings have, which is indicative of real technical excellence. Here is an example of uh, the pieces I'm speaking about. They all have really dark regions and really light regions in, in contrast to one another. I would like to argue that the what we expect to be black paint is actually really, really dark brown, which is um, much more fruitful for, for round shapes in our perception. This painting, take a look at the flowers. It's beautiful, right? If you look a little bit closer, you'll notice that the petals are a little bit wilted. And there's a dragonfly hanging out around the, the bottom of the, of the flower face. This, in, this implies that even the most beautiful thing decays. Even the most beautiful thing has a half-life and is eventually dying. This leads me to my next point of why we should respect art history. It is a non-coded way to look at society. There's no language involved. There's no need for alphabet. We just look. And the connection between Drake's album cover and this genre from hundreds of years ago, is it deals with timeless themes of mortality, anxiety, and the fear that we are all dying, and the fear that everything that we care about, such as luxury, 
is slowly diminishing as well. And I want to end with a quote from the great philosopher Drake. <laughs> that's who's sitting on that album cover, that kid that's somehow gone from his mom's basement in Toronto to, to becoming a king. That's what the, that album cover is about. And there's a lot of deep thought involved in that because you can go crazy doing this. That's what the album is pretty much about, just staying sane. But maybe, maybe not though. You have to listen to it. <laughs> Thank you.